fire is his heart's passion the fire is his flame it's his love it's his passion for you his desire when we step into that we step into him when we step into the fire and he takes us in he's taking us deeper into him amen and so that we can come through like gold amen Praise God. Glory to God. Glory to God. <clears throat> Welcome to True Grace Church, everybody. Glory to God. What a beautiful night. What a beautiful night. What a night. Some of you are going to hear things tonight that God is dropping on you exactly at this time, on this day, for this season, to get you through what you need to go through so you can come forth like gold. Hallelujah. So may your spiritual eyes be open tonight to see what you couldn't see before. May your spiritual ears be open to hearing what you couldn't hear before. And may your heart... Be wide open to receive everything that God's going to pour in tonight. Because He's going to pour wisdom into you. He's going to pour instruction into you. He's going to pour revelation knowledge into you. He's going to speak prophetically into your life. So expect something new. Expect a rhema tonight. Yeah. Expect a rhema word from God. That means a word that God just breathed for you tonight. Amen? Yeah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Well, for those of you watching online, welcome. For those of you who are watching at the replay, welcome in Jesus' name. We are here in Redlands, California. I am Pastor Heather, and I co-pastor with my husband, Apostle Larry. And we are so excited about the end time revival! Glory to God! No place I'd rather be in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. So tonight, I want to go into part two. I taught part one on Sunday about sowing the spiritual way. When you sow the spiritual way, according to God's kingdom principles, according to God's new wine sowing, you can truly, 100% of the time, Expect the harvest. And bigger than you ever dreamed of. More than you expected. 
But there is no sowing in the kingdom without faith and without understanding. God doesn't want you to just do things because it's religious or it's tradition. He doesn't want you to do things because that's how the church has always done it. Well, we've always done it that way. The Lord says, no, I want you to do it my way. That way you get my results. Amen? Amen. You get kingdom results. And kingdom results are flourishing, abundant, more than enough. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. So on Sunday, you know what I spoke about. Those of you who were here, part one was sowing the spiritual way and I talk to you about the tithe the tithe is so beautiful there's a spiritual way to sow into the kingdom that brings joy to God's heart and touches his heart and brings blessings into your life when we touch God's heart he pours out blessings he pours out favor he pours out life Amen. Sowing the spiritual way is done with your spiritual eyes open and having understanding of what sowing means to God and why He desires each one of us to sow into the kingdom. We do not sow the old wine way anymore. No. Mm. Amen. Hallelujah. If you've been in church a while, you know the old wine way. Give. Because God says if you don't, you're cursed with a curse. Give. Because we got to keep the lights on. Give. So you can get 10,000 increase. Like Vegas. Roll the dice and get, you know, double ones or whatever. No. None of those ways are correct. Amen. Amen. When a child gives a present to their parents. With the money the parents gave them. <laughs> they go to the store, they pick it out, they shop, they want to find something just exactly what mommy likes, just exactly what daddy likes. It could be a soda pop, it could be a candy bar, it could be another blue shirt. <laughs> It, it could be it could be anything. It could be a pair of socks. But the child picks out the present that they feel the parent would love. And they may wrap it up. It might look kind of goofy, you know. They might make their own wrapping paper, make their own card, and then bring it to you or give it to you on your birthday or at Christmas or Mother's Day or Father's Day. And you act so surprised. And you're so excited. Yeah. It's not because you needed that present because you were you were on your last pair of socks. You know? No. But because the heart of the child was displaying what you had taught them. Amen. And it's better to give than receive. And the child is being taught what it feels like to give. The child is not completely aware of the full lesson that's being taught. But as this becomes a lifestyle, then the child realizes, oh, I'm a giver. Coming up on Christmas, coming up on Mama's birthday, coming up on Daddy's birthday, I'm going to get him a present. Or maybe they just want to do it for no reason at all. And they come home with a little thing they made at school, but they said, look, I made this for you. Teacher said we could make this for anybody in our life. And, and I said, well, I'm going to make it for my mom. Uh, please. And your heart melts. And then they grow up to be a giver. Yes. They don't grow up to be stingy. Come on. They grow up to be very generous with giving, with loving. They grow up to have a heart like you. And then when you get to be, like in my case, now I'm a grandparent, and I get to see how my daughter gives to my grandchildren. And it blesses my heart because those children don't go without. Because she married a very generous man as well. And my son-in-law and my daughter are very generous and very giving. They're both very hardworking. They're very hardworking, but they give to the children. And the children are very blessed. In fact, they're more material 
far more materially blessed than my daughters were when I was raising them because there's two parents in the home. But it's it's beautiful. And God wants you to understand sowing and reaping. He wants you to become like Him. He doesn't want you to give to get Him to love you. Do you love me now? That's the orphan mentality. That's the foster child mentality. That's the kid who has all their clothes, items packed in a duffel bag waiting to be shipped off to the next house if they don't line up right. But you see, when, when, when you give out of revelation, it's always done with love, and it's always done with faith, and it's always done with purpose. And God wants you to understand this for one reason. He wants to get blessings and favor to you. Yes. Amen? Amen. That's the whole reason. That's the whole reason. Let's just really re- let's just really be honest right now. Does God need anything from us? No. 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 He's God all by himself. He was God before he created man, and he'll be God forever and ever and ever and ever. But he created us to be like him. He created us to become his family. He created us to become his sons and daughters. He created us to be in his image and in his likeness and then to reign with him forever. Hallelujah. Over things we don't even know yet because it's not yet to be released to us. Right, Jesus. People in heaven know what they're going to be reigning over, but we don't know that yet. But right now we're just learning. We're in the testing stage. <coughs> We're in the training stage. No matter how long you've known the Lord, you're still in the training stage, right? Yeah, but then when you get the training down, you, you you go up. You keep getting elevated. You get keep getting promoted. So we don't sow the old wine way anymore. We don't sow out of religious duty or out of obligation or because we're forced to do so. We sow because we understand the kingdom principles as the Spirit reveals them to us. We are to sow with understanding, with faith, and with great joy. Yeah. Now, some of you, the enemy wants to tell you this. You don't have enough to sow. You just got a pittance. You just got a little bit. You got so many bills, you, you have more month left than money at the end, right? <laughs> you're, you're, you're wondering where you're going to pay all your bills the last week of the month because the first three weeks is all the money is gone. And the Lord says, I want to give you wisdom. Say it. I want to give you wisdom so you never feel poor. So you never are poor. So you don't live under the poverty spirit or a poverty mentality of I never have enough. You see... You could be a millionaire and have a poverty mentality. That's right. Because wow. you still spend more than what you make, or you're afraid to lose it. Yeah. Right. Right. So you never use it. Wow. Come on. Except for things that you think are going to either get you more or bless you. Wow. But that is just the Babylonian system. That is the system of the devil. The devil is very stingy. Oh, he gives blessings, but they always come with sorrow. Oh, you you play to pay with him. You pay to play with him. You want his power, you're going to pay. But that's not how our God works. Our God is, is the one that gives us everything richly to enjoy. And then he teaches us how to enjoy it. He teaches us to be like him. So don't let the devil tell you, you don't have enough to sow. You must start somewhere by faith. Or you will always, always have a poverty mentality. Always have a mentality of being broke. And always looking over your back and over your shoulder wondering when the bottom's going to fall out. But those who sow will always know they're going to reap. They have a protection plan. Didn't I talk about that on Sunday? Amen? Amen. 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 Hallelujah. This is what I read on Sunday. This is a quick review. 
Malachi 3, 8 through 12, English Standard Version says, Will a man rob God? We're talking about the tithe. Right. Yet you're robbing me. But you say, How have we robbed you, God? In your tithes and contributions? You're cursed with a curse, for you're robbing me, the whole nation of you. Bring the full tithe into the storehouse that there may be food in my house. So bring the tithe into the storehouse so that there may be food. There's a reason. And thereby put me to the test, says God. Put me to the test, says the Lord of hosts. A host is the name of a warring angel, by the way. The word host always means warring angels. Amen. They gather the spoils. Says the Lord of hosts and angel armies. If I will not open the windows of heaven for you and pour down for you a blessing until there is no more need in your life, I will rebuke the devourer for you so that it will not destroy the fruits of your soil and your vine in the field shall not fail to bear, says the Lord of hosts. Then all nations will call you blessed for you will be a land of delight, says the Lord of hosts. He likes saying his name, doesn't he? Yeah. Yes. Lord of hosts, Lord of hosts, Lord of angel armies, Lord who controls it all. Amen. Lord who controls it all. Lord who controls the spiritual world, the natural world, and everything else. Amen. He says, these are the things that I will do for you when you do what I tell you to do, because this is how you're going to be blessed. You know, you can stand in your kitchen all day long and die of thirst if you never go and turn the faucet on. Turn the faucet on. I want water. Turn the faucet on. I want water. Turn the faucet on. I want water. But the Lord says, you want protection? Bring me the first 10% off the top. Called the first fruit. If the first fruit is holy, everything else is holy. That's how it works. Jesus is the first fruit. Made us holy. Amen. Right? He's the firstborn above many brethren. He gave his life, and his life is holy and made us holy. Amen. Set apart unto God. When you bring that first 10% to God, the curse that was put on the earth when Adam sinned doesn't touch you anymore. Hallelujah. What's the curse? You shall work by the sweat of your brow, and thorns and thistles shall you bring forth. That's what God told Adam. Just go read Genesis chapter 3. Because you've chosen to do it your way, Adam. Now you're going to go out of the garden. And outside of the garden, there's thorns and thistles. And now you're, you're not in the garden where everything's already growing for you. Just pick and eat, pick and eat, pick and eat as much as you want. You're going to go outside of the garden. And you're going to live out there. But you're not going to be able to do it. like you were going to be able to do it before you fell. Oh. See, he was always supposed to take over the whole earth. There wasn't supposed to be a postage-sized stamp of a, of a <laughs> garden on the planet. And just stay there. No. Yeah, you're going to be like five billion people on this little... No, no, no. He was supposed to take over the whole planet. Have dominion. Multiply. Amen. He was supposed to do it with his, without a fallen nature, but he yeah. fell. And when he fell, he became selfish. He began thinking of himself. That's why his son Cain killed the brother Abel. Cain didn't want to bring the offering. God said, bring up, bring you vegetables. God says, I need, you know, you're supposed to be bringing blood. This is for an atonement for sin. Vegetables won't do it. Right. Yeah, but I grew those. And God says, you grew those in my ground, by the way. Oh. Your brother brought me the lamb. It's acceptable. God didn't even tell Cain that's not an acceptable offering. He just didn't even acknowledge it. You know, if you give the old wine away, God doesn't even acknowledge it. That's why people say, I've been tithing for 30 years and I'm still broke because you're doing it the old wine way. Wow. wow. Say it loud. You're doing it the old wine way. You're not doing it with revelation. You're not doing it with faith. You're doing it like somebody's twisting your arm behind your back. Okay, 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 I'll give God. You know I only make X number of dollars a month. I'll give to you then. And wait till I don't have to tie. And I'm not going to tie on my tax return. So there. Whatever. Whatever. 
People get money all different kinds of ways, and then they dole it up. Well, I'm not going to pay. I'm not going to tithe on that because that's not technically a paycheck. Yeah, but you just made five hundred thousand dollars on the sale of your house. Well, I'm not going to tithe for fifty thousand dollars. You got to be out of your mind. God says, "Where do you think the five hundred came from?" Right, right. I'll take you back down to five. You want to go live? You, you want to go live in a little apartment? You used to have something big, but I, I'll have to size you down now because I wanted to give you more, but you withheld from me. What was rightfully my own. So then you're cursed with a curse. Because the curse was already there. It's not because God's cursing you. It's because the curse was already there. Just like the snakes in the wilderness. When they began to speak against Moses. And they began to speak against God. And they said why did you bring us out here in this wilderness to die? We were at least eating good in Egypt. Yeah you were slaves also. Yeah. You weren't eating good. No. Those weren't the good old days, brother. Look at the stripes on your back. Getting whipped by the Egyptians. Those were not the good old days. Right. So you sit speaking against God. You start speaking against his servant Moses. You start complaining. And God says, I'm pulling my protection off you. And they're out in the wilderness. And there's poisonous vipers everywhere around the camp. Come on. And God says, hedges up. I pulled it up. I'll not have a hedge around you anymore. And the snakes come in and start biting them. Yeah. Those snakes never bit anybody while God's protection was there. Amen. Wow. The minute the protection lifted, the snakes came in. Wow. And that's what the devil wants. The minute you say, I'm not going to tithe, I don't, I, don't, I don't really want to tithe, God says, well, you don't have to. That's your protection. That's mine. It's mine. It's mine. It's mine. God says, I don't, want, I don't want you to be greedy. I don't want you to be stingy. And I don't want you to be broke and poor. I don't want the devil coming in and messing with you. I don't want the devil messing with my children. I want all of my children blessed, prosperous, trustworthy, with money. So it doesn't become their God. Because the love of money is the root of all kinds of evil. Yes. The world loves money. We use money as a tool. Right. We don't love it. We love God. Amen. We serve God with the money that He gets us. Amen? Amen. So this is what He promises will happen if you tithe. And remember I taught about that? And I said different types of sowing mm -hmm. is like planting different types of plants and trees in a garden for different types of fruit or crops. <coughs> different types of sowing and offering bring forth different types of harvest and increase your anointing. What? Mm. I just said that. Yes. Increases your anointing. Yeah. I didn't say you could buy the anointing. No. Don't put words in my mouth. No. no. It's not a transaction. Come on, Mama. It's yeah. a covenant. Amen. That's right. yeah. Wow, come on. It's a covenant. It's beautiful. Because remember, the parent gave the child the money to buy the present. Right. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Amen. Never forget that. God gave you the ability to go pay, get a paycheck. It's, yes. not yes. it's always that way. Yes. Or God gave you wisdom to make a savvy business deal and you made money off of it. Amen. God gave you that ability. Amen. God gave that to you. So it actually increases your anointing as your faithfulness is demonstrated. So if you're faithful with a little a little is how you start. Amen. Right? Amen. Then you'll be faithful with more. And you'll be tested with more. You'll be tested with more. You'll be tested with more. Amen? Amen. When I started working, way, way back in the day, <laughs> the minimum wage in the state of California, which was higher than any other state in the nation, was two dollars and twelve cents. Oh, yep. Oh, <laughs> and gasoline was nowhere near a dollar a gallon. Amen. So two twelve was pretty good. Yeah. Well, what's a what's a minimum wage now? You work. If you, I work. I work at a fast food. Twenty bucks. Twenty dollars an hour if you work at a fast food place in the state of California. Right. 
That's how much I made an hour when I left the county of San Bernardino as a supervisor over 11 people that I worked seven years to get that position. That's how much I made in 2003 when I left the county. That's how much I made an hour. Wow. The same as they get for making burgers at Burger King. <laughs> wow. Come on. And I was raising children on that. Wow. Wow. Yeah. So, but you have to be faithful with a little. Mm -hmm. And you'll be faithful with more. Mm -hmm. And all of us have a little. Amen. All of us have a little. Even if you don't have a job, you still have a little. You got here tonight somehow. Yeah. You got something. Amen. 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 So the tithe itself belongs to God. The tithe is 10% of what comes into your hands. The tithe is a 10% of all your increase. The tithe is holy. Set apart unto God. And in bringing the tithe to God brings protection to all that you have and all that you own. We just read, He opens up the windows of heaven and pours out blessing on you. There's not enough room to receive it. He rebukes the devourer for your sake so He can't touch your stuff. Amen. He causes your vine to bear fruit in the proper season. He causes things that you've already sowed in the past to come forth right when you need it. Amen. Like right when you need it, like, Lord, I needed you to come through. It's the 11th hour. He goes, okay, you got 59 more minutes. <laughs> so I'm glad you come through at 11.59, right? That's okay. It's all right. Because he's teaching us, trust me, don't sweat it. Don't sweat it. I got you. Amen. I got you. Amen. He's got you. If you're being faithful and you're trusting him with the tithe, he's got you. Yeah. I put him to the test. Decades I put him to the test. As a single mom, I put him to the test. Hallelujah. When I owned three pair of shoes, I that's all I had for several years, three pair of shoes. Two work shoes, two pumps for my for my job, high heels, and one pair of, of tennis shoes. And they were all payless. You know, payless isn't even in, in business anymore, right? Yeah. Amen. Come on. Working two jobs, sometimes three when I could. God was faithful. Yes. God taught me when I had nada. When I had no nothing, little bit, just a little poquito. <laughs> poquito. And the way that I did it, to honor the Lord, this is the way I did it. I'm not saying you have to do it like this. Is even though I got direct deposit, I would go to the bank on the day that I got my the money usually came in the middle of the night, and I would go the next day and I would take the tithe out and I would put put it in cash. And this was me, single mommy, right? I would lay it on my bed and I would kneel down by my bed. And I'd have that cash there and I'd put my hands on it and I'd say, This is yours, Lord is holy. You know all the needs that I have. And you you know you know what's come in, you know what groceries we need to buy, you know rent, you know car payment, you know everything that we need, Lord. But this is yours. So I trust that you're gonna make that ninety or anything else, you know, because I would give over the tithe, but I trust that you take the rest of it and you you make it stretch for your glory for your glory and I thank you for my job I thank you for my shoes I thank you for the girls shoes I thank you for their clothes I thank you Lord I have enough underwear to make it through the week and only have to wash once <laughs> I mean you give thank God for stuff like that right yes. you, you're grateful when you get a brand new toothbrush yes, yes. <laughs> it's exciting to live yeah. Yeah. thankful yeah. and grateful yeah. And so when you live like that, you just have an attitude of gratitude all the time. Amen. And then you know you're protected. Amen. You know you're protected. And then, obviously, I'm way past that now, thank God. Amen. But it's all God. It's all God yes. to be faithful with a little. Amen. So then I want to talk about two other areas. Sacrifices. Free will offerings. Sowing seeds. Remember, we're planting different types of plants. Mm -hmm. Okay? Some are going to grow pretty quick. Right. Some you can purpose what you want them to grow. Mm -hmm. See, the tithe is protection. The tithe is not seed. The tithe is not seed. It's protection. It's the tent. Mm -hmm. Seed or free will offerings are different than that. 
Okay? So, see, sacrifices, free will offerings, they're different kinds. We must surrender everything to God. It's all His. This is what you need to remember in all of your life. We sang it tonight. Take my life as a sacrifice. I want to burn for you. Only for you. Everything surrender to God. Everything. 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 When we live surrendered, everything else comes easy. It comes easy. Because we're already right up on Him. We're already leaning right up into Him. We're surrendered. Hallelujah. We're leaning on the everlasting arms of Jesus. We're trusting in His promises. We live, breathe, and move by His Word. Yes. Man shall live by every word, rhema, that comes out of the mouth of God. He cannot tell a lie. He cannot break a promise. He cannot fail you. He can't. He's never failed anybody. He can't fail. So if there's a blip on the screen, it's because there's something that we didn't understand. We didn't operate out of obedience, out of surrender. But surrender. When you realize, oh, that happened because I wasn't surrendered in that area. The Lord says, yes, would you like to surrender? Yes, I'd love to surrender to you. See, these are the private, quiet times with God. Even as He's speaking to you right now. Some of you are getting revelation right now. And you're realizing, well, you know, it's kind of like a 60-40 deal. Like I give Him 60, but 40 I hold on to. 40% of my life I hold on to. No, no. He says, no. 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 70-30? No. You only want 70% of your sins forgiven? No. no. <laughs> 70% righteous? No. 80% righteous? No. 95%? No. 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 None of you would walk the aisle with somebody and marry a person who walks down the aisle and says in their wedding vows, I promise to be 99% faithful. No. <laughs> you would say, you. 99 is not fine with me. 100 all or nothing. And Jesus says he paid it all. He says would you be willing to give me your all? Because those who do always get the reward. So look at Mark 12 41 through 44. Then Jesus sat down near the offering box watching all the people dropping in their coins. Now what a strange sight that would be, huh? Huh. (laughs) People walking up, you know, the the box, whatever they've got there. It's set there. And Jesus sits really close to it and watches what they're putting in. Yeah. Wow. I mean, (laughs) I've never seen anybody do that, right? That's what Jesus was doing because he was teaching. He was teaching his disciples a lesson. He was watching all the people dropping in their coins. Many of the rich would put in very large sums. Clunk, 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 clunk. Right? You hear it? Clunking. But a destitute widow walked up and dropped in two small copper coins. Worth less than a penny. Wow. Jesus called his disciples to gather around. Come, come, men, come, come, come. I need to teach you something right now. And he said to them, I tell you the truth. This poor widow has given a larger offering than any of the wealthy. Does it make sense? It sounds almost dumb for her to give, right? In the natural, like, well, man, you need to keep that. Like maybe that could buy you like a loaf of bread or something like that. But no. She didn't keep it. She brought it. 
He says, she's given a larger offering than any of the wealthy, for the rich only gave out of their surplus. What's left over off the top? What's left over after I paid all my bills and all my debtors, bought my new robes, my new clothes, my new prayer shawl, <laughs> my new shofar to go with my collection, so I could blow the trumpet and everybody could hear me pray the most righteous prayers I've ever heard. Oh, Lord. Mercy. He gave out of their surplus. Didn't hurt at all. Didn't even feel it. No big deal. But she, she sacrificed out of her poverty and gave to God all that she had to live on. Wow. Which was everything she had. Oh, beautiful. Wow. Jesus wants you to understand that if it if it's like tipping God, if it's just giving something that you can afford, it's not pleasing to God. He didn't even brag about all the all the money that all the other people gave, the rich people. He didn't look at it like that. He didn't look at it like a CPA would look at it. He looked at it how God looked at it. He looked at it how the heart was when you give somebody something from your heart and it's so much value and percentage out of what you really need and they know that you've done that they're in awe she touched God's heart she moved Jesus' heart with what she gave. Because she had already surrendered her life. Wow. Wow. She had already surrendered her life. Let me take you to a story about King David. King David. King. Wealthy king. Has lots of money. Manages all the finances of the entire nation of Israel had had won many battles and taken many much spoil. Lot silver in his day was so common it was just heaped up on the side of the road like rocks, like granite. Yeah. In David's day silver was so common it was heaped up on the side of the road like sand in piles. Second Samuel 24, 18 through 21, then Gad came to David and said, Go up, rear up, rear an altar to the Lord on the threshing floor of Aruna, the Jebusite. So David went up according to Gad's word as the Lord commanded. And Aruna looked and saw the king and his servants coming toward him, the man who owned the threshing floor, right? That's where they would thresh wheat. He went out and he bowed himself before King David with his face to the ground. And Arona said, Why does my lord the king come to his servant? And David said, To buy the threshing floor from you, to build there an altar to the Lord, that the plague may be stayed and stopped from the people. And Arona said to David, Let my lord the king take and offer up what seems good to him. Behold, here are oxen for burn and burnt sacrifice, threshing instruments, and the yokes of the oxen for wood. All this, O king, Aruna gives to the king. And Aruna said to the king, The Lord your God accept you. But David said no to Aruna. King David says, No, no. I will buy it for a price. I will not offer burnt burnt offerings to the Lord my God of that which costs me nothing. So David bought the threshing floor. He bought the oxen for 50 shekels of silver. David built there an altar to the Lord and offered burnt offerings and peace offerings. So the Lord heeded the prayers for the land and Israel's plague was stayed. Jesus. Wow. The offering stopped the plague because people were dying. Come on. 
People were dying in the land. And the word of the Lord came to David, bring an offering to me, bring a sacrifice to me. Bring it up to me, it will be pleasing to me, David. So David went out to, to this place where he was told. And the man says, you can have the land, you're the king, you can have the threshing floor, you can even have my oxen. That's like giving somebody your car, okay? Oxen were very expensive. Yeah. You can, have the, you can have the oxen, you can have the wood of the yoke, you can burn it, you can have all the instruments, everything. I'm just going to give it to you. You're the king. And David says, no, 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 no. I understand how this works. There you go. I will not offer to the Lord my God that which costs me nothing or that which comes cheaply. Oh, wow. Right. Yes. Right. Amen. No. Right. I will not do that. I will not insult God. That will not be a pleasing offering. See, it's not pleasing to God when you just throw in the tip. 18 and a half percent, 20, I don't know. Just throw in a little tip. Bring in a 20, throw it in the back bag. Whatever, throw it in the basket. Now, if the 20 is all that you've got, well, the 20 is something you're specifically sowing for, and it's actually a big amount to you. I remember when $20 was a big amount to me. Yeah. A big amount to me. When I would sell twenty dollars on top of the tithe, I would always name my seed. I would always claim my seed. I would always name it. This is twenty dollars of seed offering for this, or it would be a twenty dollar offering of thank you, God. There was always there was always a, a a something that was tied to that seed or tied to that offering, like this. What was tied to that offering? The plague stopped and people stopped dying. Oh, Glory to God. Amen. Yeah. So we don't want to bring something to God that doesn't cost much. That's not really sacrificial giving. Well, Jesus is a sacrifice, but I don't need to bring a, bring a sacrifice. I mean, God knows I've got bills. He does. But He also knows that He's going to give you what you need to pay those bills. Come on. Thank yeah. you, Jesus. Yeah. Now, sowing for a specific need by faith. When you sow for a specific need by faith, it pleases God too. Because without faith, it's impossible to please God. Come on. Those who have freely given and sown into the ministry will have their needs met. Amen. Amen. That's the truth. Amen. Some of you haven't trusted God in that area yet, so you're not really excited. But when you trusted God in that area, Amen. you get really excited. Amen. Like really, Amen. really exciting. Amen. And you're like, I'm expecting it, I'm expecting it, I'm expecting yes. it. Because I yes. did it by faith, because I know yes. it's a seed in my future. Yes. Amen. It's a seed in my future. Yes. Every farmer who puts seed into the ground puts it into his future. Yes. You don't put the seed in the ground the next day you got, you know, corn. No. This this is a process of growth. He goes out and waters it, he watches it, he looks at it, he pulls the weeds away from it. He protects it, he builds a fence around it. He shoes away the animals to try to eat it. Yes. He protects that seed. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Wow. Now, this is a scripture that you're going to know really well, but it doesn't apply to everybody. Mm -hmm. A lot of times people like to apply Philippians 4.19 to their life when they're not in agreement with the word. Mm. Oh, wow. oh, say that. Mm. Look at Philippians 4, 18 and 19. Mm. Paul's writing to the church in Philippi. He says, I, I now have all I need. In fact, more than enough. I am abundantly satisfied. Why? Because I received the gift you sent by Epaphroditus and, I, and viewed it as a sweet sacrifice perfumed with the fragrance of your faithfulness, which is so pleasing to God. The Philippian church gave him provision. Wow. Mm -hmm. yes. Yes, they provided him a gift. Mm -hmm. They provided him provision, wherewithal, and they sent it through his servant, his, the guy who worked with him, who was a faithful servant, his Epaphroditus, and they said, please give this offering to Paul. We know he's over there sewing tents together, and the apostles should be ministering the gospel. He shouldn't have to be sewing tents together yes. to make money. All right. He should he should be taken care of. Amen. Amen. Because they gave the gift, it was a sweet smelling fragrance to the Lord and to Paul. And 
And Paul said, you've been so generous. You've given me so much. I don't have to make tents for a while now. Thank you guys. Now I can just preach the gospel, cast out demons, heal the sick, raise the dead, and do the work of God. And now, because you've done that, I'm convinced that my God will fully satisfy every need you have. Because you'll satisfy my need. So God will satisfy your need. It's reciprocal. Yes. That he'll fully satisfy every need that you have. For I have seen the abundant riches of glory revealed to me through Jesus Christ. See, Paul had already gone to heaven. Paul knew what was in heaven. He knew what was waiting. He knew what it was waiting. He wasn't down here complaining, going, oh my God, when am I ever going to get a couple of bucks extra? When am I? No, he was just saying, I know I'm going there, but I, it's for me, to, for me to live as Christ, to die as gain. I can't go yet. I can't go yet. So he, he would sew these tents, which was a very low job compared to his previous position as a Pharisee. Right. He traded in all those fancy clothes. Hallelujah. Uh, he, he just preached the gospel free of charge. But, but, there's a scripture in the Corinthians, in 2 Corinthians. Paul is talking to the immature church. In fact, he wrote them two big letters. 1 Corinthians and 2 Corinthians. He says, you guys don't understand about giving yet. You're just like babies. Yeah. You're still carnal. You fight amongst each other. You're jealous and you compete. You're jealous and you compete with one another. You're babies. I need you to grow. He says, do you not know that I robbed other churches so I could come and preach to you? Wow. Where is he? Wow. It appears to me the Philippian church took care of Paul when he went to Corinth and preached to them because they didn't even give him enough offering. And they were they were savvy in the spirit enough to go, wait a minute, why is the apostle sewing tents right here? Yeah. With you know who else he sewed tents with? Wow. Come on. Priscilla and Nicola. Right. Hi. Hi. What is going on here? Well, we got a baby church. We got a baby church who's taking care of all their needs before the needs of the minister. Who's bringing the kingdom of God? Right. Who's cast demons out of them and out of their children and healed their sick and raised their dead and cloths were put on his body and carried to their sick and they were healed. Come you on. can't put a price tag on that. No. Right. Your cancer's gone. Jesus is Lord. Yes. Yes. So when you read this, you must read 18 with 19. Mm. You can't just go around going, my God shall supply all my needs according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. My God shall supply all my needs. I'm not even going to work. I'm not even going to get a job. I'm just going to sit home and wait for a job. This is really. You're going to get hungry and skinny. In that order. You're going to be sitting in the dark. Yeah. Wonder why there's no hot water or water at all. <laughs> no, God's not going to supply all your needs according to His riches and glory if you don't take care of His ministers. Right. And so into the kingdom so they can preach the gospel. Yes. Amen. Jesus. Hallelujah. Yes. Glory to God. Yes. So this is how you sow for a need. Amen. Paul promised him. You give to my need, God taking care of every one of your needs. Thank you, Jesus. Every one of your needs. Now, I'm going to take you back. I'm going to take you back to somebody who gave and had very little. But their result was amazing. Yeah. Like the result was a straight up miracle. Amen. Wow. Miracle workers working a miracle, miracle now. Yeah. Yes. He'll never let his kids down. First Kings 17, 18 through 12, New Living Translation. Then the Lord said to Elijah, the prophet, Go and live in the village of Zarephath, near the city of Sidon. Huh? That's not even in Israel. Yeah, just go there. I have instructed a widow there to feed you. <laughs> right. All right. Is she rich? No, no, she's broke. Come on. Like broke? Like flat broke. Yeah. Like broke is broke can get. Yeah. I've instructed a widow there to feed you, Come prophet. On. Come on. Beautiful. Wow. So he went to Zarephath. 
As he arrived at the gates of the village, he saw a widow gathering sticks, and he asked her, Would you pray, please bring me a little water in a cup? There you go. As she was going to get it, he called her, Oh, bring me a bite of bread, too! But she said, I swear by the Lord your God. She wasn't even a Jew. Wow. I swear by the Lord your God, I don't have a single piece of bread in the house. And I have only a handful of flour left in the jar and a little cooking oil in the bottom of the jug. I was just gathering a few sticks to cook this last meal. Then my son and I will die. Hmm. Now that's poor as poor can get. Jesus says, I'm going to send you to a widow in the drought, prophet Elijah, to take care of you and to feed you. And she's going to be cooking her last meal for her and her son, and she's dirt poor. And Elijah's probably thinking, okay, this life of a prophet. Nobody gets me and I don't even get it, right? So keep going. First Kings 17, 13 through 16. But Elijah said to her, Don't be afraid. Because he heard fear in her. She's thinking, if I feed him, there's nothing left for me and my boy. Right. See, that's what the devil tells you. If you get sacrificially, you won't have enough. Right. Come on. You won't have enough. God says give, and you'll have more than enough. Yeah. Yeah. Don't be afraid. That's right. Go ahead and do just what you've said. Mm -hmm. Go do what you just said. But make a little bread for me first. Sounds like a tithe. Mm -hmm. Sounds like a seed. Sounds like an offering. Sounds like a sacrifice. Mm -hmm. Make a little bread for me first. Hallelujah. Then use what's left. Wow. Yeah. To prepare a meal for yourself. And your son. He didn't say a little bread. He said a meal. Mm -hmm. It just changed. Right. Yes. Yes. <laughs> he says, give me a little bread, but you guys are going to have a full-blown meal. Mm -hmm. All right, now. Did you get that? Yes. I mean, a little piece of bread is not a meal. I mean, I don't know how much you guys eat, but to me, that's not a meal. Uh, <laughs> definitely for Mike, it's not a meal. <laughs> no, no. I love Mike. I love Mike's appetite. It's godly. It's a god. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So a little piece of bread is not a meal, but he promised them a meal. you got to catch this. These are spiritual mysteries that you can't overlook. For this is what the Lord, the God of Israel, says. Listen to the prophet. There will always be flour and olive oil left in your containers until the time when the Lord sends rain and the crops grow again. Hallelujah. Wow. Wow. Where will it come from? The Lord? Yeah. How will it get there? The Lord? Am I going to go buy it? The Lord? <laughs> so she did. God bless this woman. So she did as Elijah said. And she and Elijah and her family continued to eat for many days. Yes. Like almost a year. Two years after this. There was always. And there will always be in your house if you live like this woman. There is always was enough flour and oil left in the containers just as the Lord had promised through Elijah. Yes. Glory to God. Yes. That is my story. Yes. That is my story. Yes. That is our story. Amen. Glory to God. Yes. That is the truth. Amen. So the Lord says, have that heart of that widow. Amen. Have that heart of the widow. Now, this last little portion, I'm gonna, I got, there's, a, there's a third part to this, and that's going to come later. But there's another part to this, free will offering and seeds. I want to talk to you about Solomon, David's son. King David died. He had a son. Solomon was called to be the next king of Israel. Out of many boys, many children, this one was called to be the king. And he was young. He was only about 18 years old. He 
serve you the king at 18 years old. You, mm. you need wisdom, right? Yes. <laughs> Let's see what Solomon did. First Kings 3, 4 and 5, and then 9 through 11. Offerings to receive more spiritual wisdom for all that you need. Wow. You can sow a seed for more spiritual wisdom. Hallelujah. Because wisdom is what you need. And all you're getting, wisdom is the principal thing. A wise person with a little becomes a wise person with a lot. Wise in revelation knowledge. First Kings 3, 4 and 5, 9 through 11. And the king went to Gideon, that's Solomon, to sacrifice there because that was the great high place. There had not yet been a temple built. Solomon offered a thousand. Oh, that's a lot. Huh. Huh. Just to count that much. One, two, three. But these were animals. Right. Whoa. A thousand burnt offerings on that altar. This took a while. Right. These were all animals. Burn, 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 burn. 766, 767, 768, 769. Don't go home yet. We're not at a thousand. <laughs> wow. Well, why would he want to bring so much? Because he needed God. He honored God. He honored God like his dad did. And he honored God because he knew he needed. He needed a lot. Mm. Wow, come on. It's good. And then in Gibeon, while he was there, the Lord appeared to Solomon in a dream at night. And God said in his dream, ask me what you ask what you wish me to give you. Oh. Wait a minute. Did the dream come before the offering or after? After. 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 Wow. Come on, Jesus. You got it. Ask what you wish me to give you. So give your servant an understanding heart to judge your people, to discern between good and evil. This is his answer to God. Amen. For who's capable of judging this great people of yours? So in the dream, God asks him a question. And in the dream, he answers the question. He says, I, oh, this is what I wish. This is my wish from you. This is my, what I want from you. To give me wisdom, give me an understanding heart so I know how to rule the people rightly and I know how to discern between good and evil. I'm, I'm young. I'm, I'm a kid, basically. Because who's capable of judging this great people of yours? Because the king needs to be wise. You can't be a foolish king. You'll lose the kingdom in a month. The enemy will come in and wipe everybody out, take you, take all the gold. Now you're a captive in somebody else's land. He goes, I need wisdom. And guess what that what did for God's heart? Verse 10, now that was pleasing in the sight of the Lord that Solomon had asked this thing. And it's pleasing when you ask God for that too. And God said to him, because you have asked this thing, you have not asked for yourself a long life. Nor have you asked riches for yourself. Nor have you asked for the lives of your enemies. Mm. But you asked for yourself. Discernment. To understand justice. Hallelujah. Beautiful. Verse 12 through 14. Behold, I have done according to your words. Wow. wow. I Behold, I have given you a wise and discerning heart. Right at that moment, the anointing came. Glory. Thank you, Jesus. Right at that moment, the anointing came. It wasn't there before. Beautiful. So that there has been no one like you before. Wow. What? Hallelujah. Most time people say, well, I gotta get like you know older to get wiser. No, you got it right now. It's called the anointing. Hallelujah. Just came on him just like that. Nor shall one like you arise after you. Wow. We talk about the wisdom of Solomon. He wrote many of the Proverbs. He wrote Ecclesiastes. Yes. <sighs> I've also given you what you've not asked. Come on. Well, what, what would that be? Rich is an honor. Both. Hallelujah. So that there will not be any among the kings like all of your days. Like you all of your days. There will be no kings like me. I'm going to be the richest king. I thought my dad was the richest king. There's been like Saul, David, and then me. 
Yeah, but God says all of the kings, there will never be anyone as wealthy as you. And if you walk in my ways, keep my statutes and my commandments as your father David walked, then I will prolong your days. I'll give you a long life. Just say surrender to me. So he says, I've given you wisdom. I've given you understanding. I've given you the anointing. And now I'll be... Now I'm giving you wealth and riches that no one has ever had and never will have like you. And if you follow and surrender your follow me and surrender your life to me, I'll make you I'll give you a long life. Wow. wow. That was when he gave the offering. And then God gave him the dream. He said, What do you want? I'll give it, I'll give you whatever you wish. Do you know that you can sow for more anointing? Hallelujah. Yes, you can sow for more anointing. You can sow. Say, Lord, I want more. I'm so grateful for what I've received. I'm sowing more. I'm sowing more. I've done it with Apostle Catherine. I've done it personally with Apostle Catherine. I'm sowing to receive more anointing. I'm sowing finances. I'm sowing seed to receive more. Let me know more. Let me carry more. Let me be more effective in the kingdom. Let me be more powerful. Let me do the work of God more effectively, more efficiently, with more authority, God. Show me what I don't know. Yeah. Open my eyes. It's not going to school and learning. It's receiving the anointing. Yeah. This was a poor broke woman 30 years ago. Who, who, who didn't have two twenties to go out to dinner. This was a poor broke woman who believed God. Who took her little tithe on her little check. And laid it out before the Lord on her bed. And put it in the offering and brought it before the Lord as if I was bringing a million bucks. That's how I felt about that. This is, Lord, this is your money. It's holy. I will not spend it. I don't care. I don't care, Lord. I will not spend your money. It's protecting me and my children. Glory to God. And then look at this. You can have this. You can have more than you ever dreamed of. But the key right here, this is my last slide, is living a life of surrender. You know, old wine living is boring. It's yes. dry. Hello. It's boring. Come on. It's, it's no joy. No. There's no peace. There's no like constant peace, right. joy, contentment. It's always Something's wrong again. I can't believe the water heater went out. And yeah. You hit the garage door when you backed in. And there's always <laughs> something negative. There's always like always a downer. Yeah. Ooh, Life is very hard in the old wine. Oh yes. You can't find hardly anything good to say. Like if you say one out of ten things that's good, you say nine negative. Right. But in the new wine, everything's exciting, even sowing. Giving, sowing seeds, reaping the harvest, sowing the seed. Yes. Giving that which yes. costs you something. Mm. Giving it mm. to God. Mm. You can give an offering to say thank you. Yes. You don't even have to expect anything in return. Just thank you. Mm. You've delivered me. You. Where can I get that? anywhere. Some of you have sown thousands of dollars into psychotherapy. You've sown thousands of dollars into therapists. Thousands of dollars into antidepressant pills. Thousands of dollars into new age. Thousands of dollars into doctors to try to get yourself better. Yes. And Jesus yes. says, I'll just cast the demons out of you. Amen. And you can come and say thank you yes. by bringing an offering and saying thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I receive deliverance here. Hallelujah. I receive healing here. Hallelujah. 
think that widow was happy every day she went to that jug? So this oil in here. Yeah. It's still solid in here. Time to eat. Time to eat, everybody. Yeah. Woo-hoo. Thank you, Jesus. And so we live a surrendered life to God. All that we have is His. Amen. Yes. Look at Romans 12.1. It says, Beloved friends, what should be our proper response to God's marvelous mercy? Mm. <laughs> In the new wine, it's always marvelous mercies every day. Hallelujah! What is our response? To surrender ourselves to God? Yes, Lord. To be His sacred, living sacrifices. Mm. Mm. And live in holiness, mm. experiencing all that delights his heart. Mm. This becomes your genuine expression of worship. Hallelujah. Beautiful. Beautiful. When you know you're delighting God's heart. You know you're living the way he wants you to live. You know you're surrendering. Your thoughts are pure. You don't have all those anxiety thoughts anymore. You don't have all those negative self-hatred thoughts anymore. You don't have all the bitterness towards other people anymore. Your mind is clear. You're like, wow, I don't even hate that person anymore. I don't want to get back at them. I don't hate myself anymore. I'm not ashamed. I'm not embarrassed. I'm not embarrassed of the anointing. I'm not, I'm not embarrassed. I, I love you, Jesus. I'm not embarrassed to be like a child. I'm not embarrassed anymore of anything. I'm filled with peace. I'm filled with joy. Yes. Uh, I, you know, you, you, back in the day, you'd be embarrassed if somebody called you goody two shoes. Oh. I don't know if you know that term, but that was a good, yeah. very little goody yeah. two shoes. It means like you were, you, you, you know, you, you weren't like you didn't know anything about the bad kids, right? You know, you know, we, we didn't want to be called that. But now it's like I want to be called goody two shoes. Yeah. I want to be called holy. I want to be called set apart. I want to be called pure in heart. Because yeah. the pure in heart shall see God. Yeah. Yeah. The pure in heart shall see God. The pure in heart will see God every minute of every day. In everything. You go take a shower and you're happy. You drink a cup of coffee you're like, I'm just so happy. You get in your car and you drive and you go, hey, I still got half a tank. Thank you. You're just grateful. Amen. And then you come and you see miracles. You see people delivered. You yeah. see people set free. And you see lives changed. You see joy coming into somebody's tank when you know that they were like so depressed before. And you see the life of God, like the light's getting brighter and brighter and brighter and brighter. You're like, hey, she's getting brighter. He's getting brighter. She's getting happier. Look at that. Look at their faces glowing. And, and you're like, I can't wait to see what God's going to do in church tonight or today. Morning or night. You're excited. Every day you're expected and excited like a little child. And that's how we live in a proper response to God's marvelous mercies. And then Psalm 116, verse 17 says, David says, Now, Lord, I'll worship you passionately. Yes, yes, yes. Bring to you my sacrifice of praise. Drenched with thanksgiving. You know, sometimes the best time the best time to worship God passionately is when you're in the fire oh, hello. when everything is getting burned up and you're like am I done yet he goes not yet we're not done yet still working in that fire fire still going when it still feels dark and you're like, I can't see what my next step is, the Lord goes, just stay close to me. Yeah. That's all you got to do. That's all you got to do. I walk you through the darkest night. Just hold my hand. Look at my face. It's light. Watch my face. My face is light. Stay where the anointing is. You will be on the right path. See, it's not when we get that big job or that big promotion or that brand new car or that big house or, or whatever we think we need. Even if you said, why be healing? Well, praise God before you get it. Because yes. you know it's your promise. Yes. Sow a seed for your healing. Amen. Oh, come on. Amen. 
It worked. It worked. Yeah. So we'll see for your healing. Mm -hmm. yeah. There was a leper. Jesus healed one time. Right. And he says, now, go show yourself to the priest and take an offering. Yes, he yeah. did. Yeah. What? Yes. But I'm healed. No, no, you go to do this. This is going to keep you from getting get coming back to you. What? This is your protection from getting that sickness and that leprosy coming back? Yeah. yeah. I'm going to teach on that next time. Yes. See, there was seed that, that had to be sown in my life to break curses. My father, my uncles, and my grandfather were all Freemasons. And you got to pay dues to be in that group. And you have to worship demonic spirits to be in that group. And when you pay your money, you curse your children. Hey. Like a credit card. You get a blessing now, but you curse your grandchildren, you curse your unborn children. Some of you, your family's sewn into witchcraft a lot of money. Some of you have sewn into witches, drug deals, yeah. criminal activity, new age, horoscope, psychics. You got a giant crop that's coming up and it's all cursed. You gotta start sowing some good seed Amen. to counteract that which is growing in your life. I'm gonna get to that next time. But when you worship God passionately and bring your sacrifice of praise drenched with thanksgiving before you see the breakthrough is what pleases God because it's done by faith. Amen. You see, when I'm up here we're leading worship, and I see people who are passionate. And I see people who yawn. Now you might just be tired, but if every time you come you're yawning, I'm like, okay, something's up. What's going on? Right. Why are you yawning in worship? Right. Right. Why are you not excited? Why are you not thrilled? <laughs> the blessings that I give you, I add no sorrow to it. So when God gives you a blessing, everything about it is good. You can look at it every angle. Up, down, top, looking down, bottom up, side, inside, big inside. Go, this is so good. God, you're so good. Yes, 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 yes. His children are to be blessed, have favor and grace in their life. And you're, and you're to know that you have it. You should know every day of your life, I'm blessed. I carry the anointing. I have the favor of God. I walk in wisdom. I walk in peace. I walk in abundance. I have an abundance of joy. So if I walk into a room and there's not too much joy in there, guess what? I'm not playing for everybody. <laughs> somebody like lose it in the gas station it's okay just release peace to them you don't even have to say a word just release it peace in the spirit realm is more real than a gun in their hand that's right it is yes wow that's so good absolutely that's so good release the anointing wherever you go be aware that you carry it be aware that you are a carrier a carrier of God's peace, His grace, His joy, His anointing. Wherever you go in this world, 
Wherever you go in this world, you carry that with you. Money can't buy that. That's right. Billions of dollars cannot obtain it. Cannot secure it. But you have it. You're wealthy. You're blessed. You're prosperous. You're generous. You're giving. You're loving. You're kind. You have a lot of patience. Yes. You have immeasurable patience, kindness, and gentleness, meekness, faith, and self control. I'm going to give you an opportunity now to soul into the work of God here. What do you need God to do for you in your life? Do you need more revelation? I know I do. Do you need more wisdom? Yes, I do. Do you need an answer? Do you have a need in your life that's unmet? But yet you've been sowing, but you haven't been sowing for that. You could name it. Name, name what you need. Or I need a new car. The Lord says, okay, so. But I've got his five dollars. He goes, that'll do. Let's go without payment in spirit. <laughs> Absolutely. Hallelujah. Absolutely. And God is faithful to do whatever you need. He knows what you need. Some of you will not get the blessing that you need until you release your seed. Your seed will provide for your need. That's how I live. Your seed will provide for your need. The tithe is your perfect, your protection, but it's not your seed. So we're going to give you an opportunity to sow into the work of ministry here at True Grace Church. There's envelopes on your chairs. If you're sewing online, you can go to our website, truegracechurch.com. Or if you're here and you want to sew by phone, you can go and do that by phone. Um, go to our website and sew that way too. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for this revelation. Not everyone will get this revelation. Not everyone will. It's not everyone's going to be delivered from fear because they don't always want to let go of that fear. And the poverty spirit. You could die with a poverty spirit. I've seen many people, and my own family died with it. I don't have it anymore. I've been delivered from a poverty spirit. Amen. I've been totally delivered from a poverty spirit. I don't even worry about money. I used to worry about it all the time. I don't worry about it at all. I don't because I know my daddy's so good. My heavenly father. So if you're selling tonight, just put up your hand, put up your phone, and put up your envelope. I want to speak over you right now in Jesus' name. I speak. In the name of Jesus, over every one who is bringing their tithe, a seed, for a need, or a thank offering, I declare over your offering and that which is in your hand now in Jesus' name. I speak into that seed and I declare it to be activated now that you reap what you are sowing for that protection comes to all of you who are tithing that blessings and favor come to those of you who are bringing an offering of thanksgiving and worship unto God that anointing increases in your life now <laughs> That all of your needs are met. All of your needs are met. According to his riches and glory. That is in Christ Jesus' power to distribute. I speak over your offering right now. That it's a sweet smelling aroma to God. As you thank him for what he's done for you. You've received deliverance. You've received healing. You've received a sound mind. 
because you've been where the anointing is. You're thanking Him for the blood. You're thanking Him for His body. You're thanking Him for your eternal life. And your hearts are pure before Him. I speak that you reap a harvest now in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 You may bring your seed up to the basket now. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. Thank you, Lord. Yeah. I'm going to invite you all to stand now. Thank you, Lord. Praise God. The anointing is here in the room. The anointing is here to destroy the yokes that have held you back and held, had you bound to the enemy, had you struggling with demonic spirits and oppression in your life. The anointing is here to break off every stronghold, every spirit of fear, everything that has tied you to your past, everything that hinders you from going into your most beautiful future and the plans that God has for you. <clears throat> One of the keys to receiving deliverance is to renounce. When you renounce Anxiety, fear, sexual perversion, mental illness, bipolar, whatever it may be. Renounce generational curses that you know have been in the family. You are declaring out of your own mouth a covenant. Say, I no longer want this in my life and I no longer claim it as mine. It could be a spirit of infirmity. It could be a sickness that just never leaves. It's always there, always there. Maybe some of you have multiple sicknesses. And when one seems to get better, the other one flares up. And that's how you've lived. And that's no way of living. That could definitely be a spirit of infirmity. And you can renounce that. So I'm going to give you a few moments right now, in your right where you're standing to renounce. Renounce. Everything you've been struggling with. Renounce depression. Some of you need to renounce anger. Renounce negativity or complaining. Renounce hopelessness. It's never going to get better. That, that, that does a demonic spirit telling you that. Renounce it. You're free to renounce that. There's power in that. It's a key in the spirit. Spiritual key. Thank you, Jesus. Some of you need to renounce poverty. Lack. Never having enough. Thank you, Jesus. Now I'm going to release the anointing to you. I'm going to detach you now from what you renounced so it's no longer attached to you. And I'm going to command every spirit to leave you related to what you just renounced. Some of you have had these things there your whole life, but the anointing is here to destroy those yokes and to drive out those demons and to drive out that oppression in your life and in your mind. In the name of Jesus, I detach every one of you from what you just renounced. And I speak 
to every spirit attached to what you renounce. That every demonic spirit now with the, within the sound of my voice you can hear me. I speak that you must leave every one of these people now in Jesus' name at the count of three. One, two, three. Out. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. Thank you, Lord, for the power. Thank you for the anointing. Thank you for your name. Thank you for your mighty name, your holy name. of you are feeling the power of God in your body right now. You're feeling His power. Things are leaving you. They have to leave in the presence of the anointing. They know the authority. Once the authority of God has been released in the anointing and done properly, they know that they have to leave. They must. If you're feeling the power of God right now on you, and you want to come forward, I want you to come up here. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hi. Just come right here. Hi. Hi. What were you coming up for? I um, was really came here for my children. Especially just um, generational curses, but my daughter's been suffering. the last few weeks and a lot of anxiety and depression and um, she's just been really oppressed and I know that the Lord is you know I'm renouncing on behalf of my kids and my mother's things probably in me as well yeah children back do you want to come up the baby you have a baby a little one? This is your daughter here with the glasses on? And then that's your son there? I have three boys. Yeah, three boys as well. Thank you, Jesus. Thank Who's you. under the blanket? Uh, my youngest son, James. Oh, yes. oh, oh. Yes. He's okay. eight. He's not that little. Yeah. <laughs> but, so um, you already know that there's generational curses? Yeah, so um, you mentioned Freemasonry yes. and on... Um, my husband's side, my former husband's side, there was a lot of Freemasonry, really a lot. Um, yeah. So I just want to renounce that on it for them. And um, trauma as well, and sexual abuse as well. In Jesus' name, I detach you and those children from everything that you just renounced. I speak to every spirit that's been operating in your life, in your husband's life, and in their life. I speak to every demonic spirit through Freemasonry, through generational curses, through abuse, through trauma. To go now in Jesus' name out of every one of you out of you, out of your children now in Jesus' name. I command spirits to leave all of you now in Jesus' name. I speak those migraines to stop now in Jesus' name. I speak to every spirit of witchcraft being done over you or that's been done against you. I break its power over you now in Jesus' name and I command it to go. I break every generational curse that's come to you. Every spirit of anxiety and fear. Every spirit of worry. 
every spirit saying you're not enough, you're not good enough. I command to leave now in Jesus' name, out of her now. Every demonic spirit that says you're not a good mother and that you're not a good wife and that you're not a good Christian, that you're not strong enough and you, you these lying religious spirits I hear keep coming back to you. And you don't read the Bible enough. You don't pray enough. You don't pray in tongues long enough. These lying accusations of the enemy to make you feel condemned. I command all of those Spirits of accusation and condemnation to leave now in Jesus' name out of her. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Every spirit of timidity. Every spirit of timidity that's been on your life and cause you to not be bold and have courage and speak up and be brave. I command to leave now in Jesus name. I speak against every spirit of rebellion and disobedience that's trying to attack the children. Cause them not to be Obedient to you and obedient to your voice and to honor you as their mother. To come against the things that you tell them to do. These are demonic spirits activated in the children so that you don't enjoy them like you should. And God wants you to enjoy your children. So I break every generational curse of rebellion. Of ADD. Every diagnosis of ADD. Every spirit of PTSD, I break its power over you and over them and over their minds now in Jesus' name. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. The Lord says your heart is so beautiful before Him. Your heart is pure before Him. He says, I've given you a heart that's so tender and loving like my heart. And it has been abused. Others have abused your heart. But the Lord says, I've also given you a lion's heart. And I'm giving that to you now in this anointing. I'm giving you that lion's heart that says, I will not give up. I will not back down. My God is so great. My God is so strong and mighty. There's nothing my God cannot do. I break every curse of Freemasonry in your life. Every curse and every covenant and contract that was made against you and your children. Every oath that was taken and every bit of money that was paid. In Jesus' name, I release this anointing to you now. And I declare joy and peace to come to you now in Jesus' name. I release boldness and courage to you now. I release healing in your heart from all the pain of the past. I speak God's overwhelming joy to come into you now. I speak new wine to come into you now. And as you learn the new wine ways, joy will come flooding in. Light will come flooding in. Light will come flooding in your home, in your children, in all of them. And the protection of the Lord is around you, your husband, and your children now. In Jesus' name, peace to you. Peace to you now. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. I speak a blessing over all of your children. I declare that the Lord's favor and goodness is upon you. I declare that the Lord's peace holds and keeps and guards your heart at all times. I declare the joy of the Lord to rise up in you. 
I speak that there shall no longer be migraines that come to you anymore. That your the pain of those migraines must go now in Jesus' name. And I speak complete healing and peace to you now. Peace over the boys. Peace over their minds. Their dreams at night will be peaceful and joyful in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. I'm going to speak over you as well. I'm going to come against anything. Some of you didn't come up and you need to come up. That's okay. But I want to speak to you. There are demonic spirits that need to be removed from your life. So I'm going to ask you to stand again. I don't want I don't I don't want you to just go, oh, well, it's just I'm just gonna sit. Stay standing. Stand up like this is your sister that just got delivered, just got set free, and those are your nieces and nephews right now. Stand up I know your physical body say, but I want to sit, I want to go home, I want to go to bed. You tell that physical body, I'm buffeting you tonight. Uh, you're, you're not, you're not going to rule me tonight. My spirit, man, is rejoicing with everybody. I break off of every single person here now. Specific spirits of confusion. There are spirits of confusion that are trying to take you out of being focused. And I command every spirit of confusion to leave now. In Jesus' name. Every spirit of distraction. Some of you have experienced, you, 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 you want a clear thought, but the enemy just constantly attacks you left and right, left and right. And, and, and you're not able to get the things done that you need to get done. You're not able to just read the word for 30 minutes without being distracted. I declare every spirit that's been operating in you of distraction must go now in Jesus' name. Some of you have been still struggling with self-harm. Hurting yourself. Harming yourself. Voices telling you they'd be better off without you. Lies of the enemy. Dreams of you in a coffin. Dreams of you at your funeral. Dreams, visions of you in a car wreck. The enemy, the enemy would try to do this. This is the work of the liar. And in the name of Jesus, I break that power over your life now. I break the power of suicide that's in your family from every person who has committed suicide. I declare every spirit telling you that your life is not worth living and wanting you to end your life must go now in Jesus' name out. Out. Out now. I speak total and complete freedom now in Jesus' name. I speak total and complete freedom to you now in Jesus' name from every spirit that tells you you should just die. Have you ever said that you want to die? Have you ever said that, hon? Have, have 
you ever said that you want to die? I want, I want her to specifically renounce those words. Okay. Ella quiere que tú renuncies las palabras. Yo dice, tú tienes que decir, yo renuncio. Renuncio. Que yo dije. Que yo dije. Que me quiero morir. Me quisiera morir. Ya. He estado teniendo muchos sueños que vienen a atormentarme. A lot of dreams that torment her. Muy seguido tengo sueños de que mi bolsa la pierdo, que me la roban. She said she's been dreaming that um, she's losing her purse and that they've stolen it. Y salgo corriendo a buscar a la persona que me la quita, pero me siento que voy volando. And she said she chases this person down, but she can't catch up to them. I want her to face me. Ella quiere que la veas. Face me. Cara a cara. You may need to stay here. Helen. <laughs> I detach you from what you just renounced. Te desliga de lo que tú renunciaste. I detach you from every spirit of suicide. Te desliga de del todo espíritu de suicidio. I detach you from every spirit of fear. De, de, de todo espíritu de, de temor. All fear. Todo temor. Fear of being robbed. Temor de que te van a robar. Fear of being hurt. Temor que te van a lastimar. Fear of being killed. Temor que te van a matar. Fear that the enemy is stronger than God. Temor que el enemigo está más fuerte que Dios. And that you'll never be free. Y que tú nunca vas a ser libre. I speak to every one of those spirits now. I command you to leave her. All of you now. Every spirit of death, every spirit of death. Out of her now in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I detach you now from every spirit that's been haunting you. Every spirit that's been sent to you from witch doctors. Every spirit that's been sent to you through generational curses. Every spirit that's been sent to you through false prophets in churches that you've gone to. People that have told you in the church that you are cursed. I break the power now of every one of those words that have been spoken over you. And I speak to every spirit of fear. Every spirit that's been coming and giving her dreams, I declare you must go now. I speak that you shall live. You shall live the abundant life. I release God's anointing to you. I release this power of God into you now. The joy of the Lord to be your strength. The peace of God to guard and keep your heart at all times. I speak your dreams and your sleep to be sweet and beautiful and restful now. I speak your mind to be free from all anxiety, all fear, all worry. I break the power of all spirits around your house, around your family, around your atmosphere and your environment. I declare every one of them must go. And I declare peace flood you now. Strength. The strength of this anointing is yours now. And I declare boldness in your mouth and in your tongue to tell the devil, you do not come back here anymore. Amen. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Does she not understand what I'm preaching when I'm preaching because she only understands Spanish? She said she does like she understands bits and pieces, yeah. Are we able not to do the are we not able to do the Spanish translation for her? I've offered it, but she says no, no, it's okay. It's she doesn't want it. But um Maybe we, maybe we can do that. Maybe we can say that now because I really want her to hear what I'm teaching because she's not going to be able to grow. It's like going to, to class and you can't understand the teacher. Yeah, that's, 
The dream about the purse is the enemy stealing her identity. And so that's that's what she's fighting with is who you are telling her who she is and what the enemy is. And so that's what you want to come against is that spirit that's lying about who God says she is and who she is as a Christian. It's her, her identity is tied to the purse. Do you want to speak that over her? You're the anointed one, girl. I speak, I speak over you now in Jesus' name that every spirit that tries to steal and take your identity must go now in the name of Jesus. I speak over you now that you know who you are in Christ. That you have the mind of Christ. That you have the identity of a righteous child of God. That you carry the anointing. That you are safe, protected, and powerful in Jesus. And He is in you. Jesus is powerful in you. In the name of Jesus, I release this revelation and this anointing to you now. Receive it as your very own. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! over every one of you now who would be struggling with any kind of sexual perversion. Break the power of all demonic spirits that have come to you through abuse. I commend every spirit that has come into your life through things that you were seeing, things that you saw in your home, things that happened to you, things that you viewed online, things that you witnessed things that you saw other people do. I break that power over you now in Jesus' name. And I come in every spirit of perversion, sexual perversion to leave every one of you now in Jesus' name. Go! Thank you, Jesus. Every spirit that causes you to masturbate, I command to leave now in Jesus' name. Every spirit that gives you fantasies in your mind about being with other people, same sex, opposite sex, whatever it is, I break the power of those vain imaginations coming from demonic spirits of things that were put upon you, perpetrated upon you things that came in through, things that you were seen or were done to you. Go now in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. And I break the power of all spirits of self-righteousness, judgmentalism, haughtiness, spiritual pride, pride that causes you to judge others, Pride that, that causes you to think you're better than other people. Pride. Judgmentalism. That causes you to condemn yourself even because that is a spirit of condemnation and self-righteousness. Just two sides of the same coin. I break its power over you now. And I command every one of those spirits to leave in Jesus' name. Glory to God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Some of you are struggling with memory issues. God's setting you free tonight, right now. Amen. God is freeing you now from any type of memory issues. Hallelujah. Forgetting things. I commend every spirit that's attacking your ability to remember. To go now, in Jesus' name, out. I speak restoration to your memory now. Your memory is being restored right now. Your ability to remember names and faces and scripture. 
your ability to remember testimonies and all the things that God is doing in your life, your ability to remember things that you need for your job, things that you need, your boss is relying on you to remember for your job is, is, is being restored right now. I just, I just even see that the Lord's just filing it right now. It's like, it's like a wind had come in. You had all these papers organized on your desk and the devil just blew all the papers off and they just went everywhere. And you're like, oh no, I can't remember. And the Lord says, that's okay. And he just put all those papers right back in place. And the enemy cannot come in and, 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 and disrupt your thoughts anymore. Amen. I speak wisdom to every single one of you in your job. How you deal with people. Wisdom on how to deal with people. Even difficult people right now in Jesus' name. I just I just release a special anointing to you right now to have to walk in such patience with difficult people. People that have, that have, their personalities bother you. Their their moral character bothers you at work. And maybe it's family. I just release a special anointing to you now. To have long suffering for them. Be kind. To walk in wisdom. And to pray for them. To pray for them like you've never prayed before. To, to just pray from your heart and speak a blessing over them that they would be free. And they'd be free from torment. They would be free from agitation and irritation. Hallelujah. Some of you are still struggling. Once in a while, you're still struggling with using cuss words. That's what the Lord just said. He said, some of you, you get pushed to the point and boom, out it comes. You're like, oh, why did I say that? And you feel like you just went back six months. I just, right now, just if, that, if that's you, there's nothing to be ashamed about. Nothing to be ashamed about. These are just habits. These are demonic things that attach themselves to us and then they are used against us to cause us to go into that downward spiral. Just renounce. In Jesus' name. And I, I declare every spirit. Every spirit that attached itself to you that causes these words to come out. Even just words of anger, calling people dumb or idiots. I break that power over you now in Jesus' name. May the Holy Spirit come and just ever so gently just wash you. Wash you from those words. That's not you. That's not you. You don't talk like that. That's not your heart. It's not your heart. God is restoring your language right now that you're able to just speak from the Spirit. That your words are true. He's speaking the truth in love, kindness, and joy. And all condemnation of doing that, I remove from you now in Jesus' name. All the condemnation that's come with these little failures, these little slip-ups must go now in Jesus' name. They will not destroy you. They have no power over you anymore. They're lying little demons. They don't have power. These are not principalities. They're just little lying, nagging things and they're going now in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. I just release this sweet anointing to every single one of you now. Revelation of who you are. Revelation of whose you are. Revelation of what you carry. Revelation of how God sees you. Revelation of how Jesus loves you. Revelation of how the Holy Spirit is inside of you. What He looks like inside of you. What He's doing inside of you. I speak this anointing of the new wine to be more evident in your life. That you'd be able to receive even more new wine. You would, you would say this end time revival. This is for me. I was born for such a time as this. And you're understanding more and more and more. As the words going forth. Revelation knowledge just keeps coming. And coming and coming to you. 
and you're expanding on the inside, you're free. You're free. Amen. I believe. You're free in Jesus' name. You're free. You are free. If the Son has made you free, you are free indeed. Hold on to your freedom. Amen. Hold on to your healing. Hold on to your deliverance. Yes. Hold on to your joy. Hold on to your peace. Hold on to your sound mind. Hold on to the power that God gave you. Hold on to the fact that you are filled with God's love. Hold on to the fact that you, God has made you a success in every area of life. Hallelujah. And even in your weakness, His strength is made perfect. So there's nothing to ever be ashamed of. Draw from His strength tonight. Hallelujah. Praise God. It's been a wonderful night tonight. It's been a wonderful service. It's been amazing. It's been amazing to see God move in people's lives. Hallelujah. Amen. These two up here just receiving just spiritual surgery right now. Just the Lord is just ministering to them right now. Those of you online, if you've never seen anybody go down in the power of the Spirit, it, it's not weird. It's the, it's God allowing you to go down to where you're not even thinking about what's going on in the natural so He can do a spiritual work inside of you. It's one of the most beautiful things you can ever experience. Not that you have to go down every time. But when you do, we 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 don't we don't just allow it. We encourage people to experience God's power. However, some people just stand and worship with their hands in the air. Some people just cry. Some people shout out loud. Some people just bask in the sweet presence of God, and they're just transformed by His presence. Hallelujah! Amen. However, God touches you. That's how he wants to minister to you. And it can be different every time. So I just declare blessings on you as you go home tonight. As you travel home. Blessing as you sleep. Blessing as you receive what the word was released to you tonight. These prophetic words about your sowing. Prophetic words about your reaping. Prophetic words about your needs being met. Prophetic words about God's provision and love for you. And His plan of perfection that is working in you while you continue to receive and stay planted in the anointing. Amen? Hallelujah. Glory to God. We will be back here on Friday at 6.30 p.m. And that is when I will do part three. And this is going to be very powerful because this is sowing to break and destroy demonic yokes in your life. Sometimes this is necessary for people to truly experience complete freedom or to maintain their freedom. It is a spiritual key and a spiritual principle. And the demons hate it. Religious people hate it. They come against it. But I will never be ashamed of the anointing or the truth that sets people free. Amen? Amen.